Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash, and this is an overview of the database that comes with RPG Developer Bucking. When you first open the database, you are presented with a splash tooltip screen that you can choose not to show next time. And it reads, this section allows you to specify the ability values and in-game behavior of the cast members, items, and classes that appear in the game. In this tool, game characters and monsters with ability values are called casts. So that's going to be our player characters and our monsters. The items, objects, etc. specified here are placed on maps and used in events to create the game. First, change the name and parameters of the main characters in the casts menu, then return to the map editor and specify them as the main casts in the game definition of the master menu. Then press the test play button at the top of the map editor screen to start the game, and the main cast you selected should appear on the screen as a character you can control. If you're not sure what to do, as always, please refer to the manual on the RPG Builder Bakin official site. Uh, some of the terminology in this older version has been changed. So if any of this sounds confusing, don't worry, we're going to go over all of it. We'll start by clicking the database and we are given a beautiful new menu with a lot of information. We'll just maximize this. We're going to be spending a lot of setup time here in our games, I think. Uh, for casts, we have a ton of default characters and when I played with the top menu I actually specified this character graphic and this graphic for layout not truly knowing what it was they did well I got the graphic for moving correct uh, the graphic for layout though I could have chosen something a bit more appropriate essentially the layout is the entire character graphic and the icon that I chose was for the icon image I think it still works out fine though so the database menu, we have six submenus, one for casts, one for items, one for skills, one for classes, one for state definition, and one for attribute definition. The way that I would think about these is you can create your characters in the top menu for casts. You can create items and equipment in the items menu. You can create your skills and abilities in the skills menu. You can actually create entire classes in the classes menu. This is a brand new feature that was not present in Smile Game Builder. State definition allows you to create different buffs and debuffs for your character, and in Smile Game Builder, we only had a handful. In Bakin, we can create many, many states. Attribute definition allows us to create elements, and we can also use this menu as a means to, as the tooltip says, Create data on attributes that determine the degree of effectiveness and influence of skills and attacks. So in this series, we'll spend time in all of these menus, but for now, we're just going to have a brief overview of each of the menus and the submenus. So for the casts menu, we have access to all of the default characters that have been created with their own attributes, names, equipment and abilities, state and attribute resistance, and this is not only where our player characters go, but also our monsters. Now we can provide a name for our cast members, as well as a description. We can specify whether to include the information in the picture book menu, which is a default menu that appears in Bakin. So this acts as a sort of built-in reference manual that you can use as a bestiary, or a menu to include profiles of all of the people you meet in your game. We can specify custom advanced settings, which gives us a sneak peek of the event editor. We will be taking an in-depth look at the event editor in another episode. We can change the icon. We can change the sprite sheet. And we actually have an extremely handy 3D preview of what the sprite will look like when we change it. Not only that, but we can actually edit the collision of each character. That's right, the shape of this collision is a capsule. You can also choose from all of the animations that are available for this character and any other character in the engine. So basically, you are able to customize the hitbox for each and every entity in your game. And not just characters, but also the objects. Okay, so back in the database, you can also change the graphic for layout. Each of the heroes has their own subfolder, which is full of resources for 
that character. So you have a lot to play with when you are making your initial projects. Now, having specified the appearance of the entity, we can move on and set basic parameters. You can change whether the cast is an ally, an enemy, both or none. And you can change their level growth parameters here. You can also change the size of a lot of this UI to make it easier to read or use. If you encounter this entity as an enemy, you can change its personality as normal, intelligent, or cunning. These are different sort of AI styles. Appearance pattern can be group of same species, always alone, or group of multi-species. And then you've got a setting to not make it invisible even if they are defeated in battles. It's usually they will disappear from the map if they're defeated. So by using this, you can have your enemy character fall to the ground and stay in the scene while your characters continue to fight other monsters in the party. Finally, on the right side, we can add attribute resistance and state resistance. At the bottom, we can change the growth factors, meaning the initial values of each of the attributes attached to the character, as well as the rate of change. And we can change the type of growth from accelerated to slowed down. We've got five different options here, similar to Smile Game Builder. If we go back up to the basic tab, we can actually change to the equipment and abilities tab, and we can set which equipment and abilities this character can learn. And you can set what level the character needs to be at to be able to use certain abilities. You can also enable or disable the various equipment slots attached to the character. You have access to a battle command menu in the battles tab, and you can set up the character's battle action AI. Those of you familiar with Smile Game Builder will be glad that this setting exists. You can toggle whether or not the character will move forward one step whenever they perform an action. You can set them to not moving, and you can have them step forward and use the walk motion instead. Finally, you can set the rewards for defeating this character when they are an enemy as well as the experience and money. If we go to the effects tab, we can change the effect that plays when they attack barehanded, as well as the effect when they are knocked out. Finally, we have the others tab. You can change a number of parameters related to when this event is generated on the map. If you make any changes, be sure to hit the apply button in the bottom right corner of the screen. And now let's check out the items menu. This is a lot simpler than the cast menu. We have all kinds of different default items, very similar to the default items provided in Smile Game Builder, but there is one very important, exciting new feature here. At the bottom, we have management tags. So each one of these items or weapons or armor has its own tag. I see weapons, armor, and consumables. And we're allowed to change this to whatever we want, so you can make your own tags. We will look more into what this means later. You can set the name of your item as well as its description and basic settings, such as whether this does count as mechanically a consumable weapon or armor, whether it's available to use in maps or in battles, whether or not you have a limit on how many you can keep, and what its store price is. You can change its icon image and 3D model, and then you're given access to a couple of tabs, one being the change elements, Ability, resistance and recovery tab its attribute attack power and whether or not the character <laughs> walks one step forward when they use it you can change what part or what equipment slot is affected by the item if it is armor you can change equipment item settings critical rate evasion rate and accuracy you can change the attack power defense power and other standard attributes if it is a consumable you can change what HP recovery or MP recovery it has and under advanced settings, you can call a common event or a specific skill when the item is used. On the right hand side, you have the change in resistance, so elemental attributes, as well as states. And you have whether or not the item grants state recovery from status effects such as poison, charm, paralysis, and more. Now we'll look at the effects tab, and you can change the graphical effect when the item is used, as well as the motion of your character when the item is used. So you can select custom animations to play, depending on what it is being used. 
the bottom of the change elements tab, we have the damage formula that can be applied to the weapon. And if you click on the three dot menu, on the right hand side, you are given the formula editor. This is a powerful editor that allows you to actually refer to many of the variables used in battle, such as attribute attack power, level of the target, defense of the user, and much, much more. Let's take a look at the skills menu now. It looks like we have the same sort of settings as we did in the items menu. We are able to assign management tags, set the name and description, as well as the icon image and motion when used of the ability. And then we have three more tabs. The basic tab allows us to specify HP and MP consumption, whether or not it's available to use in maps and battles. We have a setting that if turned on, the damage inflicted on enemies will recover the user's HP. So a bit of a vampire toggle, whether or not the user will be unable to fight after using the ability. So a kamikaze setting, whether or not the ability has a damage attribute, the success rate, the common event to be called, the camera light effect, which can be changed between large, medium, small, and none, whether or not an item is consumed, the number of the items to be consumed, and whether to use a weight motion. We have the effect on allies tab, which allows you to specify state recovery, whether HP or MP is recovered, ability enhancement and state changes, as well as raises in resistance, and effect on enemies, which offers us the same options, but in reverse. In other words, casting debuffs on the enemy. You can also set your damage formula or HP recovery formula, depending on what tab you're in, and change the appearance of the effect when it is used. Very simple. Now for the classes menu, and this one is very exciting. We have four default classes, the swordsman, the priest, the wizard, and the beast tamer. Each one has its own name and a description can be set. There is an icon image and a 3D model. We have presets for growth speeds from late bloomer to precocious, as well as a basic change rate. The class is attribute resistance and state resistance. And at the bottom of the screen, we can see kind of how we would use classes. Growth factors when changing to this class this will allow you to change the HP, MP, attack, and magic power, defense, and agility by default, and how these attributes are changed when your character levels. In the abilities tab, we are able to toggle the items that we are allowed and disallowed to use, as well as the skills we can learn and at what level. And we are able to change the face graphics under effects. Looks like we can add as many of these as we need for our game. That was pretty simple. Let's look at state definition. States are buffs and debuffs that are cast on entities. They can do things like increase your evasion rate or cause confusion or charm, put your character to sleep or even instantly kill them. But you can also increase your attack power. You can add your own states to this and assign them management tags. You can name them, give them descriptions, as well as set multiplexing. This can be disabled or you can set whether the effects basically stack for the same character. You can set the removal condition when the battle ends, number of turns, probability, number of steps, or when the caster receives damage. You can change the icon image and 3D model. And for a first, you can change the abnormal actions of the state. There are a lot of different parameters to play with here. You can also change the states that are removed upon granting this new state. So if you have two completely polar opposite states, you can have them remove each other when you cast one on the character. So if you wanted to use a resistant to poison state, then you could cast that onto the character and you could also remove the poison state from the character if it exists. The states have an influence on your abilities, an influence on your equipment, and these can actually allow you to disable or cause your equipment to be fixed, as well as have an influence on battles. You can add the attack count, change the preemptive attack rate and the critical blow rate, the reward rate, the EXP growth rate, the item obtaining rate. These can also change your influence on map movement, which is also a first. 
States can change the number of encounters or disable the encounters. They can increase your movement speed, move you to the back of the party train, or cause you to display in translucent, which would be really handy if you had a sneak state and then your character would be slightly translucent, indicating that they were in the sneak status. You can also change the effects when this is activated on an ally, opponent, when the state continues, or when the state ends. So that was pretty simple. Now let's take a look at the attribute definition. By default, we have six, but we can add many, many more and have as many elements as we need for our projects this time around. Each element or attribute has a name, description, image, and 3D model. And we only have one tab here, and that is basic, and it allows you to specify the compatibility between attributes. This will remind you whether or not the attribute is the same. So we have the fire attribute selected and its compatibility between other attributes is set to zero by default, but for fire, it's reminding you that it is, is the same attribute. So if we go to ice, this will tell you that it's the same attribute here. So you don't mistakenly set some sort of weird number for your compatibility between the two same elements or attributes. This is all very exciting stuff, but that does conclude the overview of the database menu for RPG Developer Bakin. I hope you enjoyed. Please stay tuned for more Bakin tutorials. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.